Guys, I have a phenomenal Kubernetes application dashboard that will allow you to easily spin up home lab services in your self-hosted home lab Kubernetes clusters. This free and open source solution is a game changer when it comes to easily installing applications. Well, stick around. You're going to want to see this application dashboard for Kubernetes and your home lab services. The free and open source Kubernetes application dashboard that we are referring to is KubeApps. KubeApps is a solution that adds a beautiful GUI dashboard to your Kubernetes cluster so that you're not fumbling around with installing YAML files or digging up Helm commands to run just to install all of your favorite home lab services or home lab applications. What's more, not only can you install those applications with KubeApps, it also allows you to manage those applications, upgrade those applications, and many other lifecycle operations. And one of the other really cool things about KubeApps that I really like is that you can add additional Helm repos to your KubeApps dashboard to greatly extend the catalog of services that you have available to install in your Kubernetes cluster. Well, first things first, how do we pull down KubeApps get it installed and configure the solution so that we can easily start installing applications in our home lab Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so first things first, let's get KubeApps installed. To do that, we have a couple of steps that we need to perform ahead of time. And one of those is to create a namespace as well as use Helm to get KubeApps. And to do that, we've got to add the Helm repo for Bitnami to install KubeApps. So let's step through those steps one by one. First things first, let's create a namespace. I'm going to say create ns for namespace kube apps. And we can do kubectl get namespace. And as you can see, we've created the kube apps namespace. Now, also, you're going to notice that I have metal lb running. And that is going to allow us to easily provision kube apps with a load balancer front end. And that allows us to connect easily to the kubeapps dashboard interface. Next, we need to add the repository for Helm that allows us to install the kubeapps interface. That is the Bitnami repo, and that is simply done by issuing the command helm repo add bitnami with the URL. Now I'm going to issue this command, but you're going to see that I already have the repository added. So it says that it's already added, so it can't do that again. We can now install the kubeapps interface. Now to do that, we issue the command helm install kubeapps. We give it the namespace that we just created, kubeapps, and we're pulling this from the bitnami repo and then this special flag set front end service dot type equals load balancer that tells the installation that we want to use an IP address from the metal LB load balancer. So let's issue the command. Now, as you can see, the command has completed and it's going to tell us that we can access the kubeapps URL via the HTTPS and the parameter for service IP. In other words, it's telling us we're going to have to get that information from our load balancer. So an easy way to see which load balancer IP we've received is we can issue the command kubectl get all dash a. And now we're going to scroll up and we're going to be able to see the cluster IP as well as the load balancer IP. So as you can see, there are a couple of load balancer IPs that are provisioned in the environment. One I have for traffic. And then this is the newly created load balancer IP. And I'm simply just looking for the kubeapp service. So we see that we've got load balancer and then now we see the IP address, so dot .241. And then again, we're exposing port 80. Well, as you can see, the installation process is just a few commands. So in a few minutes, you can have a working kubeapps installation. As we have shown in the video, one of the things that will make this process work really well is having a working metal LB installation. And I have a video covering the topic of installing Metal LB in your Kubernetes clusters. 
Metal LB is a great free and open source load balancer that you can easily use in home lab self-hosted Kubernetes clusters to provide those external IP addresses to connect to those self-hosted services with little effort. So with Metal LB, you can easily get an IP address for your KubeApps installation, and then you're off and running at that point to install applications. Well, now that we have KubeApps installed, the fun part begins. Let's log in to KubeApps for the first time, take a look at this dashboard, see the functionality and how we can use it to easily install applications into our cluster. Now, when we browse out to that particular IP that is issued from our load balancer, we have the Kube Apps dashboard that is presented to us. However, one thing you'll notice is that for the login, it is asking for a token. What do we need to do here? Well, we have to go back to the command line hopefully the last time with installing your applications, but we need to go back to the command line and we need to issue a couple of other commands to assign a role to a particular kube apps operator. And then we need to get the token for that particular operator. To do that, we need to first create the service account kube apps operator. And this service account can be named anything as far as I'm aware. However, I'm just going by the official documentation here. So we're just creating a kubeapps dash operator for the service account. And I'm just going to hit enter. And as you can see, kubeapps operator has been created. Now for demo purposes, we are going to simply make this kubeapps operator an administrator just to make things easy. However, in a production environment, you're going to want to create the proper role for this kubeapps operator and restrict access and all of the RBAC principles that we need to implement in production. So the command is kubectl create cluster role binding kubeapps operator, which is our operator we just created. We're giving them the cluster role of cluster admin, and then we are assigning the kubeapps operator user as the service account. Now we're going to actually create the secret that we will use to paste into our token. So to do that, we've got a series of text that we're going to paste in. And this can also be a file if you want to create a YAML file and just simply apply it this way. However, using the cat command, we're able to just paste this in literally. So we're going to uh, create a secret. The name is kubeapps operator token default namespace, we are giving it the annotation of service count name, kubeapps operator. And again, we're creating a secret. So let's hit enter. Now, all we have left to do is to actually retrieve the secret that we just created. To do that, there is one final command, kubectl get, looking at the default namespace, secret kubeapps operator token, and then we are decoding the string and we're going to see that in plain text when we issue the command. So this is our secret token. So I'm going to copy this token all the way down to where we see the root at kube-1, which is actually our terminal prompt. So all of the text in between we are copying. Now let's paste that in to our kube apps dashboard. And now we have successfully logged into kube apps. As you can see, we have the kube apps dashboard, we are defaulted to the applications menu. You can toggle this show apps and all namespaces, and that allows us to see everything that we have installed, including kube apps. So now we've got a wonderful dashboard that really shows visibility of what we have installed. If we click the catalog menu, now you're going to see all of the applications that we can by default install from the kubeapps dashboard and it is a extensive list you can also filter based on the category so if you want to look at machine learning applications if you want to look at databases you can filter down and see exactly what is available for each of those particular areas that you want to install now one of the other cool things you can do is you can actually search for applications so this makes it really handy if you want to search for a particular application that you uh, want to install instead of just simply trying to browse the full list. 
Now, what's really awesome as well is you can go up to the top right hand corner menu and let's click this tile. And as you can see, we've got an option for package repositories. If we click package repositories, we will see that we have the Bitnami package repository displaying as this was the repository that we used to install KubeApps. So it successfully pulled that. We have the option to add package repository. This makes this really, really cool because you can essentially add in all of the Helm repositories that you want to add to your KubeApps installation. So I'm going to add a HashiCorp repository. So I've simply pulled this information from uh, Googling HashiCorp Helm repository and found this link. Uh, we're going to click the radio button for Helm charts, and then we are going to install repository. Now, if we navigate back out to catalog, this is really cool. Now we can see things such as vault out there. So we've essentially added the package repository from HashiCorp to our catalog of applications. And you can continue to build that list. Now let's actually install an application with KubeApps. So let's say we want to install Jenkins, for instance. Let's click this application. And as you can see, one of the cool things I really like about KubeApps is you get this nice dashboard even when you are about to install an application. We will click the Deploy uh, button in the top right hand corner. One of the cool things with KubeApps is it gives you both a visual editor as well as a YAML editor. And these are the values that it views as essential for the installation. With the YAML editor, you can actually change values in a low level way as part of your Jenkins installation. So I'm going to flip back over to the uh, visual editor. I'm going to type in a password for Jenkins. I need to populate the name field as well. And now we're going to click deploy. And as you can see, the application is being deployed. And one of the cool things I really, really like, if you remember in a low level way, we had to use the kubectl get all a command to see our load balancer IP. But notice we've already got our access URLs that it has pulled from the deployment. KubeApps helps us to see that easily in the deployment page. So we're just simply waiting on our pod to come up. Jenkins takes just a couple of minutes. So we're going to allow the pod to come up and then access the application. And after a minute or a minute and a half, we had our pod come up. So everything looks good here. So let's see if we can actually access this load balancer IP and pull up our Jenkins installation. Awesome. As we can see, Jenkins is up and running. We have an awesome application dashboard that gives us a wealth of information for our installations. And we can see our catalog of applications that we have installed on our Kubernetes cluster. Guys, if you can tell, I am excited about KubeApps and I've been rolling this out into my Kubernetes clusters in the home lab and it's been phenomenal. It allows you to get from ground zero to installing all of your favorite Kubernetes applications and it allows you to play around with applications maybe that you've wanted to test drive in your Kubernetes clusters in the home lab. And I know for me early on, it felt like the barrier to entry with Kubernetes was not only getting the infrastructure structure stood up in a way that worked properly, but it was also installing the apps. KubeApps, I think, is a great solution, not only for beginner Kubernetes administrators, but also for those that are up and running with Kubernetes, familiar with the solution, but just simply want a point and click dashboard that is an a la carte of applications that you can easily deploy. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel. I've got more great content coming you guys way. Please do keep home labbing, stay safe out there guys, and I will see you guys on the next video.